on the last episode of Toast Hammer. That looks absolutely sick. However, I'm not actually a magical person, so I did come up with a solution. What is up, guys? Welcome back to the much-awaited conclusion to my Dune Crawler Tech Priest Kit Bash. Now, I know from the intro that I said I found a solution. What sort of sorcery is this? How can I magically levitate a plastic disc around a plastic model? Well, the answer may surprise you. Or it might not, to be honest, who knows? But I did take inspiration from a fairly unlikely source, that is to say, Games Workshop's model range itself. I had remembered this type of effect being used specifically in the Seraphon range, one of their newer kind of centerpiece models. I remembered having some sort of floating disc around it as well, so I went to take a look at the Seraphon model range. And while I did find that model, I did quickly discover that it was levitated. I think it was just kind of glued around the back or part of the molding or something like that. So that was one option, unfortunately, down the drain. However, on that very same page, I came across something a little bit unexpected. A pyramid of sorts with what looked like lightning or electricity coming out of the top, and that suddenly struck a nerve, because I had seen that effect before in the Shards of the Satan, specifically the Transcendent and Void Dragon, used to create levitating effects with electricity. That got me thinking, would I be able to reproduce that effect using my kit bashing skills, a little bit of ingenuity? It turns out I could, with the help of Vince Venturello, a talented fellow hobbyist who put up a YouTube tutorial about how to make lightning effects with a paperclip. Now, I am using a, in my opinion, slightly upgraded version of that tutorial, so I'll take you through the process as well as what I did to make it look a little bit better. In this kit bash, I am using armature wire instead of a paperclip because it's what I have. <laughs> Armature wire is usually used in sculpture to build the basis of sculpting, on top of which you usually deposit clay or some other sculpting medium. However, in this, I am actually using the wire as the medium itself. Luckily, I had a gauge of wire that was about the same thickness as some holes in the disc where I needed them to be anyway, so that made things a little bit easier. But I still had to find a way to attach it to my model. In the front center of the kit bash, there was a little greebly there that had a circle in almost exactly the same thickness as the wire I wanted to use. So that made it easy to drill out and put some wire there. The other two parts in the back, well, I just used some gaps that were not perfectly filled in from the kit bashing process and hoped that would cover it well enough. And, you know, it's not perfect, but I think it works out pretty well. After that, I took some needle nose pliers and started bending the wire. Now, it's important not to just go back and forth on your lightning effect. That stuff is for Harry Potter's forehead. We're using all three dimensions in this three-dimensional sculpt here, so we're going both left, right, forwards, backwards. We're using all sorts of bends to create a truly much more organic and natural looking lightning effect, and I think that is one of the keys in order to make this effect convincing. After semi-randomly bending the uh, wire around, I decided to place it in the hole to see how it fit in with the rest of the model. And at that point, I discovered it was much easier to just manipulate the disc with my hands to make sure I was getting it in the proper angle and placement I wanted it to be. The wire would keep its shape and I could easily pull it out without destructing any of the work done to it. However, there was a problem. The wire was a little bit long for this placement, so I just, just had to trim it and re-bend it just a little bit so it would fit back in the proper place, in the right position, at the right length. Do this two more times and you have 
your lightning effect. I chose three points of contact here for stability reasons and also just to keep things even in terms of visuals with the model. After gluing it into place, this is where Vince's tutorial would end, but I chose to take it a step further because for such a large effect, his was a little bit smaller, I felt like I needed a little bit more pizzazz. So I took out another gauge of wire, one a little bit thinner, and wanted to add some branching effects like you sometimes see with lightning strikes. I glued some of the wire to the disc, some of it to the wire itself directly with super glue, and let that dry. I also found an attachment point on the model, so glue it from the base model itself back into the wire, creating several different branches from this front piece. Again, making sure I'm using all of my dimensions while bending it and also placing it. With those branches in place, I started experimenting with the other two lightning effects. And then I added a little bit more as well. In the end, I added about two branches for every piece of lightning, and at that point, I was pretty satisfied with how it was looking. Things were in a nice balance of looking realistic and just looking awesome, which is really what we're looking for in the, the miniature sculpting world. Rule of cool and all that. After all of my wires were in place, I was confident gluing everything into the base, and at that point, I was really surprised by how sturdy this was. If you're worried about this effect being not the sturdiest thing to put your model on, be rest assured, even with a decent amount of pressure, this disc was not going to be shifting out of position anytime soon. But our work was not yet done. There were some weird joins where I had glued the wire to other pieces of wire and it ended up with this weird kind of stair-stepping join that didn't look natural or organic at all. So I had to find some way to smooth out those joins. And I turned to my rarely used and truly rarely usable friend, Liquid Green Stuff. Now for those of you who know Liquid Green Stuff, you might know that it is very frustrating to work with. It shrinks when it cures and it has a kind of a weird texture but i decided to press on because i was too lazy to use actual green stuff or something like milliput so knowing these two properties of liquid green stuff i over applied it over the joints kind of just glowing it on there and waiting for it to cure after that i got rid of the texture and uh, compensated for the shrinkage and was able to pare it down with my hobby knife until I was able to come up with some more natural looking curves while still keeping the overall vibe smooth and energetic. At this point, normally I would say, let's throw it on a base and get a zenithal on it and go to some B-roll. But I decided to keep it off the base at this stage in the building process to, in order for easier painting of the underside. That being said, I did spend some extra time on the priming and underpainting step, opting for sort of a slap chop-ish dry brushing effect because I knew this was going to be an OSL heavy model. I wanted to get a more of a value sketch down, opting to light certain spots more selectively in anticipation for painting them with that electrical effect. Anyway, I've been talking enough, so let's take a look at the artillerist.
Anyway, I hope you liked that video very much, and if you did, please consider leaving a like on the video because it helps the channel as well. And if you enjoy kit bashes or other hobby content in general, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I try to put these out every two weeks so you can be inspired and find something maybe useful. I know I didn't know how to do this before, and now I do. And it's something that I can use going forward whenever I want to. And hopefully you try it out yourselves because it's really quite a fun effect to play around with and not really difficult at all. And as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.